missing grace. How sweet that's We can call her Sophie. She lives on an island in the Caribbean and doesn't want to give us her real name or where she lives. She does what many people here do, to earn themselves a little extra money for food, schooling and housekeeping. She makes her own rum. What she lacks in resources, she makes up for in abundance with her know-how, grounded in a tradition with roots reaching back into the 16th century. Sugarcane, Saccharum officinorum, is a member of the grass family. It can grow to over four meters, and it makes most of us think immediately of sugar, but not the Caribbean islanders. To them, it means jobs and the best rum in the world. On the 25th of September, 1493, Columbus set sail for the Indies. On board his 17 ships were 1,500 people. And among their cargo were a few cuttings of sugar cane from the Canary Islands. It was Columbus who planted the first sugar cane in the West Indies on an island he named Hispaniola. In the 16th century, with its colonization of the Caribbean islands, the art of producing sugar from sugarcane spread rapidly. The production of alcohol from molasses, a byproduct of the sugar production process, wasn't far behind. Cultivation of sugarcane is hard work, which led to a flourishing slave trade in the area. At its height, there were a thousand vessels involved in the trade triangle that took rum from the West Indies to the east coast of North America, exchanged the liquor for cotton bound for England, and then went on down to the west coast of Africa, where slaves were loaded up and shipped to the West Indies. Ships plying that trade route have to pass between Diamond Rock and the island of Martinique. It's a narrow and strategically important strait the wind conditions that prevail around the rock make rounding the island something to be avoided at all costs when en route to the important harbour of Martinique. In fact, this strait has long been regarded as the key to the Caribbean. The rock came to be known as HMS Diamond Rock as a result of heroic action by British forces marooned there for more than a year while under constant attack from the French. After 18 long months without success, the story goes that a French soldier had the inspired idea of dumping a few barrels of rum in the sea close to Diamond Rock. The British, overjoyed, got the rum ashore, and less than 24 hours later, the French had Diamond Rock. Thanks to the rum, Martinique had been taken, and the key to the Caribbean was in French hands. The story of rum is the story of seas and oceans and of the men who travel over them. Much of this story is history, but the traditions live on. Mike Rose, ex-Royal Navy, founded the Royal Naval Antigua and Barbuda Tot Club on Antigua to preserve a tradition. Rum in the Navy goes back, or it did until it was abolished in um, the end of July, 31st July 1970. It goes back hundreds of years, over 300 years. And eventually it was issued at a rate of one imperial pint of rum per man per day. Half a pint at lunchtime, half a pint in the evening. Um, this obviously caused a lot of problems. People fell out the rigging, uh, there was a lot of drunkenness, but the conditions were such in those days they had to feed or give the sailors rum uh, to cover up the very bad food and the conditions and make them want to fight and all the rest of it. Okay, book is closed. Thank you.
the, the, the rum ended in the Navy in 1970 and I left in 1983. And I was behind the little bar, just behind us up there, and uh, running it and having my tot of rum. And someone came up and said, what's that you're drinking? And I said, oh, it's my tot. And they said, oh, could I try one? And I said, yeah. So they tried one, they said, well, that's good. Um, and then the next night there was two and three and so on. And eventually there was a group of ten of us that used to meet every night. From that small beginning um, in 1991, over the years, the membership has increased to about 300 people worldwide. Every day at 1800 hours, club members gather to drink a toast to the Queen and read out loud from some old nautical writings with a preference for any stories where the British put one over on the French. And on Saturdays, a special toast to sweethearts and wives. May they never meet. And the, Queen, God bless her. the club's rum is a mix of rums from Jamaica, Barbados, Guyana and Trinidad, which, it's said, can make changes to even the best laid plans. Rum is manufactured in many places around the world, in Australia, Indonesia, India, and South Africa. However, it has its roots in the Caribbean, and it's said that it was in Barbados that the drink was first referred to by name. Barbados water, rumbustion, and rombillon, which means real disorder, are terms used to describe rum. Sugarcane, which is thought to originate from Papua New Guinea and grows best in a warm climate with an annual rainfall of at least 1,000 to 1,200 millimetres. From the moment a shoot starts to grow to harvest time takes seven months. And in the West Indies, sugarcane is normally harvested from January until May. An increasing part of the harvest is mechanised, but quite a bit is still done manually. At the time of the harvest, the stem or sugar cane is full of a sweet resin-like substance. The weather conditions at the time of the harvest are also important, as the sugar can easily be affected, and it can be prone to ferment too early. That's why the sugar content of the sugar harvest is tested on arrival at the distillery. After being tested, the sugar cane proceeds to the crushing and pressing stages where the juice, which the French-speaking manufacturers call Vejou, is extracted and will eventually undergo fermentation and distillation. As a visitor from an increasingly digital world, stepping into Biel on the island of Marie Galante is an experience above the ordinary. The feelings reinforced at River Antoine in Grenada with its magnificent water wheel which drives the sugar crusher. as here at the La Monie distillery in Martinique. Here it's easy to get an overview of the process. And they're almost self-sufficient energy-wise, as they make use of the slag products from the crushed sugar cane, using it as fuel to power the old steam engine that dates back to the early 20th century. 
Rum is a beverage that can be used as a basis for mixed drinks or, as is the case with the old dark rum, a drink whose rich flavour is best enjoyed straight as a complement to a fine meal. When producing rum, one usually refers to two different types of rum, rum agricole and rum industriel. Rum industriel is the most common form, and it is after pressing that the production method starts to differ. It is the form of rum that Bacardi, the world's biggest producers of rum, make. The company produces more than eight bottles per second every day of the year. A centrifugal process extracts the sugar from the sugarcane juice, producing a dark and very viscous sweet liquid known as molasses. Water and yeast are then added to the molasses, which is then left to ferment for a 12 to 36 hour period until it's reached an alcohol level of 7 to 10 percent. Then it's time for distillation. In the production of rum agricole, on the other hand, produced mainly on the French-speaking islands of the West Indies, the sugarcane is not centrifuged but pressed up to three times in order to extract as much juice as possible. This juice is then left to ferment for up to 48 hours. The fermented liquid is called vin de canne and is ready for distillation. Distillation is carried out according to two methods, either as in this case, in what is known as a column or coffee still, where distillation is continuous, or in a pot still. Column distillation is usually carried out twice until the alcohol level reaches about 95%. It produces a rum that's somewhat lighter in colour and character. Column distillation is also the most widespread method when it comes to rum industriel, although pot still distillation, the oldest method, is also still used here. Distilling is carried out twice and the alcohol, which assumes a more robust and aromatic character, achieves a somewhat lower alcohol level, about 85%. record, we shouldn't forget that pot still distillation is the most widespread, outside the regular market that is. Then we place it around here and we seal it down. We will be lighting the fire now that it should get heat and then it will come from here. It runs down, it goes through that and then it comes down here to the bottom for the room. This is the heat from the pipe that gives the smoke in the end here, so the water is cooling from down here. This here, where it's smoking now, that means that it has to ward up a little more. You have to put a little more flour. <laughs> Anytime it reaches down here, that's the room. After distillation, both rum agricole and rum industriel can be aged. Normally, oak casks are used and a high alcohol level maintained, although this may be reduced to 50 or 60 percent. It's mainly the interaction of tannins and fen which gives the rum its aroma. A somewhat lower alcohol level and a certain degree of oxidation improves this process. 
In the West Indies, with their relatively dry climate and low humidity levels, evaporation, or what's known as the angel's share, can be as much as 8 to 10 percent. Rum industriel is often stored in highly toasted bourbon casks, casks whose inside walls have been toasted. Rum agricole, on the other hand, is stored in casks of French oak and dark, heavier rum for over three years. In 1663, Abel and William Gay acquired the St. Lucie estate in Barbados. Mount Gay is today said to be the world's oldest rum distillery. They distill both a light and a dark rum. The dark, extra old rum is a blend of pot still and column distillated rum, stored for 14 years in a cask. It's rich in taste, and we should remember here that in the case of rum, we're talking about a drink that has an incredible number of different aromas, so-called volatile substances. In bourbon, for example, we find 127 such substances. Blended whiskey has 184, while cognac has up to 486. And in rum, there are 550 different aromas. In other words, rum is a spirit that's hard to tame, and responsibility lies heavy on the shoulders of the blender if the producer is to manage to maintain an even product quality year after year. Each barrel that is in the bond carries a specific number, so, and, and by that number we know what date the rum was put into storage, and we know, therefore, how old the rum is. We take samples from the various, various barrels and various bonds, and we will bring them here to the lab. And we will taste every single individual barrel to decide which of those is satisfactory in terms of its maturity. And that is to distinguish from age, because age is, is simply the length of time the rum has stood in the barrel, whereas the maturity is the quality that it has, it has achieved during the time that it has been in the barrels. And having selected the specific barrels for the blend, we will then uh, prepare a blend in the lab following the standard formula for, for, the, for the particular blend. For example, for extra oil, we have a specific formula which I can't share with you as that is our secret. Um, but following that, that blend formula, we will prepare a blend and we will, try, we will then compare that against the standard. We do have apparatus in the lab, gas chromatograph, spectrophotometer, pH meter, a density meter and so on, which we use to, to test the chemical components as well as the physical characteristics of the rum. But in the final analysis, it is the consumer uh, who really matters, and the consumer, after all, is going to be tasting and nosing the product. So we have to rely on that final test as being the main and most important aspect of determining whether the quality of the product is right or not. Nowadays, rum is made all over the world and is one of the world's top sellers. Rum is sold as light or heavy, and in general, when talking about the two different types, one refers to the light as Cuban-style rum or Puerto Rican rum, and the heavy as Jamaica rum. This Caribbean island has a long and vigorous tradition of rum making, with famous brands like Captain Morgan and Appleton Estate. In terms of turnover, the United States is the biggest consumer, importing $1.7 billion worth of rum a year. Somewhat surprisingly, the second largest consumer is the Philippines, which takes 82 million liters each year. The Bacardi Martini Company is the world's largest producer of spirits, with sales of 19.8 billion cases of rum worth $1.9 billion. Bacardi was started by Don Facundo Bacardi in Santiago de Cuba in 1862. The business has been in the family ever since. But its Cuban operation suddenly ground to a halt when Castro came to power in the early 60s. A state takeover of the company was inevitable. 
but the head of Bacardi saw the danger early. He moved the company away from Cuba in time to land that had been bought earlier in the Bahamas and in Puerto Rico. Today's production is located in several different places. Bacardi may have fled Cuba, but the rum tradition still has a strong foothold there, something which is abundantly clear in Havana, when one wanders undisturbed along the peaceful streets of the city at salsa pace, enjoying the creative art being applied to vintage 1950s cars. Cuba, it is said, has the world's best car mechanics. Havana Club is the best-known Cuban brand, with a rightful place among Havana's bars and restaurants. This white rum is laid down in casks for 18 months, then filtered through charcoal to remove the color picked up from the barrel. Drinks like mojito and daiquiri probably began their lives here at Hemingway's favorite places, La Borequita and La Floridita. Vamos a comenzar eh, haciendo el mojito, que es el trago eh, más conocido, o sea, el trago cubano más conocido en, en el mundo. Este está compuesto por azúcar de caña refino, una cucharadita. Posteriormente se le añade un chorrito de limón equivalente a media tapita de limón. Luego se le incorpora eh, las mitas de hierbabuena, ya previamente para saborizar luego agua con gas o gaseosa soda se macera para hacer la la, la liga homogénea entre bueno, todo esto que hay dentro se le añaden tres o cuatro trocitos de hielo y luego se le incorpora una once y media de ron habana club que es un ron por excelencia para mezclar. Es un ron que apenas tiene sabor y que el cóctel asume el, o sea, el sabor que usted le, le, o sea, le da, partiendo de la, del sabor de la hierba buena y del limón y todos sus ingredientes. Entonces, vamos. Okay. And here's how a daiquiri is mixed at La Floridita. Primero te pongo la, la copa previamente fría. Debe estar bien fría. Una cucharadita de azúcar para cada daiquiri. Zumo de limón. El licor de marrasquino. Es un licor que se hace de cerezas. Daiquiri de limón, quien se toma uno se toma un montón. Aquí tenemos la silla de Ernest Hemingway. Él se solía sentar aquí en este rincón. Aquí vemos el busto de Hemingway, que fue develado de Hemingway aún estando en vida. Él solía venir muy a menudo, se sentaba aquí. Este era un sitio de reuniones con sus amigos, sus amistades, el bar Floridita, donde él le gustaba tomarse su daiquiri. Decía que no había otro lugar aquí en Cuba que hiciera un daiquiri tan bueno como este lugar. Y venía casi todos los días, mientras estuvo hospedado en el hotel Ambos Mundos, en Nehemiah. Desde hoy, este, 
Esta silla es una silla museable, nadie se siente en este lugar. Siempre para nosotros creemos que Hemingway no ha muerto y que uno de estos días vendrá por aquí a tomarse un daiquiri. Sophie has finished for the time being. She may not manage the work on the plantations anymore, but it is sugar cane and what she insists is the best rum in the world that gives her the chance to make a little extra money to put towards food, schooling, and that little extra something. Sophie, Sophie.